Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to the May instalment of Tartan Dane's Indie Read Along. So this is a monthly thing I do with Todd the Librarian and anyone else who wants to join in. Big shout out to Time for Books, she's been a big supporter of, as well. And basically the idea is just to read at least one indie book a month. So far this month I've read two indie books, although I might have read a third by the time I get around to editing and stuff, in which case I will add that in as well. Um, but I will start with these two, so this is, well, let's go straight into the first one. So this is Kirk Sandblaster and Zlar's World War by Ollie Jacobs. I will start by reading the blurb. War. That's the situation on the planet Zarya. Overwhelmed by overpowered rebels, the hopes of the planet rest in one space adventuring duo, Kirk Sandblaster and Zlar. This time, though, it's personal. Zarya is Zlar's planet, and it's his family who give the call. Last time he was there, he left in disgrace, so has conflict changed his ways in the eyes of his father, King Zur, or is he still seen as the reckless warrior he once was? Join another thrilling Kirk Sandblaster adventure filled with twists, turns, and even more sandwiches than ever before. Find out who is behind the rebellion, the power of superpower suits, and what a Zarian bond is. Amazon readers have called the Kirk Sandblaster series absolutely fantastic read, utterly hilarious, and humorous and smart. Complete the collection today by adding Kirk Sandblaster and Zlar's World War to your sci-fi comedy collection. So as you can tell from that blurb, it's almost a bit uh, Douglas Adamsy. What I like about these books is that you've got this friendship between, and the partnership as well, between Zlar and Kirk Sandblaster. Zlar is actually my favourite character, so it's good to see his uh, backstory involved, like kind of involved more in this one. Because we hear a lot in the previous books about his home world and the conditions he left with. I mean, he's basically like an in exile, working for like a, a, a Han Solo type, you know, he's basically a Chewbacca. Um, he's also very serious and a fighting machine. I believe he has two heads and four fists. So anything he comes up against, he kind of, he, he's going to win basically. And then Kirk Sandblast is almost like an anti-hero because he's very smug and sort of overly self-confident. He's got all that swagger that you would expect of a, a space adventurer. So yeah, it's like, um, it is, it's Chewbacca. It's Chewbacca with two heads and four arms with, instead of uh, Han Solo, with um, uh, Zaf Brannigan or whatever his name is from Future Armor. That's the dynamic there. And obviously we get to go back to his world. Uh, there's a, a bad guy who's like been involved earlier in the series, but it doesn't necessarily, you don't have to read them all in, in order to get the, uh, the enjoyment out of this. And there's just a lot of laughs along the way. One thing I did think as well is that uh, Jacobs has got a lot better since the early books in the series, because I've read maybe five or six of these now. And... Uh, you can see how he's got he's matured as a writer throughout and even in kind of the length of the books uh, this is like more this is a, a novel now i guess whereas the earlier ones felt more like novellas the layout's better as well there are like definitely far fewer typos and spelling mistakes i think i maybe noticed one or two and uh the cover design's great as well i believe it's done by elaine m will who does graphic novels as well and i've actually reviewed one or two of those on the channel and uh, talked about them and I was just glad to get my hands on this as well because this has been out on Kindle for a while. It actually came out on Kindle just as I finished reading the other Kirk Sandblaster books, but it wasn't out in paperback, so I had to wait to get my hands on it. But I'm glad I did, and I gave it a pretty solid 4 out of 5. I would say even if you're new to the Kirk Sandblaster books, it's a pretty good one to go into. And you're going to get a lot of kind of comedy and humorous one-liners, but also a decent amount of action in this as well. And character too, so really, it's win-win, you know? Cheers, Todd. Okay, and then next up we have every part of the animal. There is no limit to what a mother will do to protect her child by Duncan Ralston. So, Duncan Ralston used to be published by uh, Forsaken, which was the horror imprint of Book Trope. They also published my first book, No Rest for the Wicked. And so that's kind of how I came across his work. And I haven't really kept up with like a lot of the other writers from those days. But Ralston's stuff is great, and uh, I actually... You know, I've been binging through a lot of it recently. So this one almost reminds me of The Method in that I know of him more as more as a, uh, a horror writer. And this and The Method were both much more like psychological thrillers, almost more in the vein of Gone Girl or something like that. I would recommend this to uh, Harriet Rosie if she's watching because uh, this is like set in a small town and I know that's kind of her vibe. It's actually set in Alaska, I believe. I'll give you the blurb here. Perfectly written and put together, I defy anyone to not love this one. That's from Neve Murray, Confessions of a Reviewer. Bo Lowry and her ten-year-old son have hunted the woods surrounding their Alaskan home for as long as Caleb can remember. While they don't eat themselves, they sell to local businesses, using every part of the animal. Disgusted by the wolf call, pop megastar Rainy Lane and her bodyguard Dar Darius travel to Bo's small town to join a growing group of animal activists. 
After Bo and Rainey clash during the protest, Rainey pulls mother and son headfirst into her manic, self-absorbed world when she crashes her car on their land. Soon she finds herself their unwilling guest. But in the age of instant communications, celebrities can't just disappear without the whole world demanding them found. In a violent showdown between Hunter and activists, tensions within the Lowry household are dragged into the light. Both women harbour dark secrets, but Rainy Lane will ju learn just how far a mother pushed to the edge will go to protect her child. Uh, I'll give you uh, Duncan Ralston's biography here as well. Duncan Ralston was born in Toronto and spent his teens in small town Ontario. As a grown-up, Duncan lives with his girlfriend and their dog in Toronto, where he writes dark fiction about the things that disturb him. In addition to his twisted short stories found in Gristle and Bone, the anthologies Easter Eggs and Buddy Boilers, What Goes Around, Death by Chocolate, Flash Fear, and the charity anthology The Black Room Manuscript, Manuscripts Volume 1, he is the author of the novel Salvage and the novella Womb, an extreme horror black cover book from Matt Shaw Publications. He was also one third of the horror podcast Screen Kings, dedicated to dissecting Stephen King movies and miniseries. So, I've not had the best luck with uh, like sort of these kind of psychological thrillers, um, you know, real world kind of the, that mixture between crime and horror, you know, with think people like again um, Gillian Flynn and, and that kind of stuff. But Ralston's really good at doing it, and again, he's really good at doing it here. I really liked as well this element of the the blend between this like small town, uh, like the the mother was like. Um, uh, Carrie's mother. It was very much like Carrie, actually, between the dynamic between the mother and the son. And then you've got this pop megastar who's basically like Taylor Swift or something. And it was really interesting to see those two worlds clash. And uh, and the kid as well, like the mum didn't know what Instagram was. And the kid was like, how do you not know who she is? I know who she is. And so that was really cool. And uh, I also think the length of it, I mean, it's what, 150 odd pages? And it was just the right length. It could have maybe stretched to 200, 250, but... If, if this had been drawn out to like 400 pages, it just wouldn't have worked, I don't think. And so uh, I was really impressed by it. I gave it a pretty solid four out of five and would definitely recommend this if you're into thrillers. Uh, and it's hard to pick, actually. Out of the two of these, these were both good. And uh, so I was happy with that. And I can't recommend any one of them over the other, but they're both very different as well. So pick the one that sounds good to you. Okay, as promised, I have one last book to add to this month's Indie Read Along. Is that a new... I made a new jingle apparently, my bad. Uh, this is Whispers and Other Strange Stories by Krina Ludmilla Christea. I'm going to read you the blurb. A profound darkness radiates from this book, yet each whisper conveys an unnatural beauty. Krina has woven a surreal think piece on the soul of horror. That was Felix Blackwell in The Devil's Dreams. And the blurb, it goes, Nightmares and creatures, trapped individuals, childhood ghosts, drops of rain, drops of blood, stars and snowflakes, trees and roots and birds and flames. Life, death, and ultimately, light. These short, dark stories will captivate the heart and imagination. Hauntings might occur. You have been warned. Then we've got front cover art by Vanessa Tavares, interior drawings by Florin Cristea. And this is available in both digital and print. And uh, yeah, it has these interior drawings that go with each of the stories and kind of add a little extra context to them. You can probably see from this as well, the layout in terms of like, you know, it's all justified, which is nice. Um, it is weird actually some of them have like those oh no you see those are different sections so yeah layout is all good so there's an author's note as well which I want to read out to you which I think gives some nice context some of these stories were written a long time ago one in particular in the forest of bluebells was initially written as a script paint in my second year of university and has had several endings since the idea first came into my mind another one was conceived in the rush of imagination and is the seed that started a dark psychological novel which is yet to be completed tender is the rain but most of the tales in this collection were written recently as an experiment or using the Reddit website and the No Sleep community. That's how the bud of this collection sprouted. The purpose of these stories was to scare the reader, you, and the basis was that they actually happened. They are true, even when they're not. They are written in the first person for this exact purpose. So you kind of need to be able to, you know, if you don't like reading books in first person, this probably isn't for you. Also, um... I don't know. I don't know whether it's because uh, Christea. Oh, by the way, I should point out that she also goes by Lily Bloom, which is, I believe, her pen name, and she has a YouTube channel, and you can check out some trailers for her book and stuff as well. Um, but I, I think I, I'm not sure, but I think English isn't her natural uh, her first language. I think she's uh, Romanian, and there are a few just sort of sentence structures where you can kind of tell um, where it, it just doesn't read naturally, if that makes sense. But that said, it doesn't put, or it didn't put me off, and it just read 
as like part of her authorial voice, you know? It's almost like when you read translated fiction and th th there's just something of it's just missing, you know, because of how it's been translated from one language to, uh, to another. Um, but I did enjoy the stories for the most part, as with any short story collection, you're going to have highs and you're going to have lows. Um, yeah, I also thought it was—I also thought it was really cool how all the uh, all the stories do have these images next to them, and they come at the end of the stories as well, which I think was a good way of doing it because you read the story and then you can look at the image and sort of tie the two together. Uh, and yeah, and it's also—it's just good for fans of horror and um, even bizarro to a certain extent, I would say. I also liked how the stories are sort of tied back together as well as one sort of whole. But equally. The characters, you know, there are characters of different genders and different backgrounds and all this kind of stuff, which is quite interesting when you're still reading from the first person perspective, you know. And it also make it al almost makes it feel like a collection of different accounts, like found accounts. So yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. I gave it a three point five out of five, and would I recommend it? Probably to horror readers, people like Mindy's Book Journey, maybe Jason's Weird Reads. I think he'd like it. Maybe Madeline Swan as well. Um, so yeah, if you are into the kind of more alternative side of horror I guess then uh, definitely check this out and there we have it that is it for this month's indie read along I don't think I'm going to be reading any more indie books so if I do I'll just lump them into uh, June's video so as always thanks a lot for watching don't forget to let me know in the comments if you're going to be reading any indie books during the month of May or even June uh, yeah if you want to take part in the indie read along all you have to do is pick up an indie book that's about it you don't even have to make a video or anything like that you don't even have to be a booktuber just pick up indie books that's why we're doing it we want people to read more indie so yeah also check out my uh, fellow co-host Todd the Librarian his channel is great as well and uh, he reads a lot of cool indie stuff I'm excited to see what he's got for this month as always hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video let me know what indie books you'll be reading hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video thanks a lot bye bye